Hi there, Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Rising. It's time to have a look and see what is going on when it comes to your monthly astrological forecast for March 2022. And just a quick reminder for everybody out there, I also have monthly tarot card forecasts that I put out the last week of every month, so stay tuned for that. And if you are a YouTube member supporter or a Patreon supporter, don't forget you have weekly tarot forecasts that come out every Saturday. If you would like to get a session with me, you can go on ahead to my website, it's integrativemysticism.com, or you can simply follow the links in the down bar below. And don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe. Y'all know I appreciate it, and of course, engagement helps this channel out a lot. So, what is going on when it comes to your month of March? March is very, very fast-paced for everybody. Mars, uh, not Mars, March, well, Mars is there, but March itself is a very kinetic, very stimulating month. We've got a lot of action, a lot of moves happening uh, with the planets almost all at once. They're kind of diversifying where their focus is going to be. And while it is overwhelmingly positive, you are going to want to be ready to take on a lot of this uh, new stimulation because it's, it's going to definitely take us out of sort of the more slow and focused approach that maybe the planets have been soaking us with since about November. And so if you've been looking for a bit more excitement, looking for a bit more energy, looking to be a lot more active, this is going to be the month for you. Now, I'll be started all off with a new moon in Pisces on the 2nd. And so Pisces is your 11th house of friendships and social networking, your platonic support system, as well as your loftiest goals, loftiest ambitions, you know, your most deeply personal goals and, you know, the adventures you'd like to go on. And a new moon here is opening up a window between the second of the month and the 17th of the month, right? Two weeks for a new moon influence, which is giving you a chance to start a new beginning, start a new cycle. Now, with a new moon in the 11th house, this is very likely going to be creating a whole new support system roundtable for you. Whether we are drawing in new friends or we are getting a chance to create uh, a new fellowship, as it were, of both familiar people as well as new people that you're going to find is a lot more solid than what you've been working with in recent history, whether it's recent months or even recent years. This new moon is also going to be setting a new site on your map for you to actually send yourself towards, to direct a lot of your ambitions, your goals towards, whether this is a new adventure opening up, new activities, maybe even a new talent or a new skill awakening in you. This is also going to be a time where a lot of you are going to get a chance to fulfill a lot of fantasies that maybe have not been able to see the light of day or maybe are not things that you've been able to allow yourself to enjoy on the regular. With a new moon in the 11th house, this is most likely going to be something that bridges the recreational and the social, maybe even romantic or, you know, or professional. Sometimes it's all of the above at once. Sometimes it's little clusters, little bonds across the board. With a new moon in Pisces, what we see here, though, is this is going to be overriding and overwriting a lot of what your normal has been, changing not only how people see you, but also what you are able to actually achieve in this life, what you're able to orient yourself towards faster. It's, again, fast is the theme of March. And maybe we've been taking it a bit too slow. We've been a bit too careful, a bit too shy, a bit too modest, or maybe we've been undersourced in some way. This new moon's going to help take care of a lot of that. We also have Venus and Mars both entering Aquarius on March 6th, where they will be through the duration of the month. Now, this is your 10th house of career, upward mobility, promotions, status, stature, anything that is going to help you elevate your position either in your field or change the impact you have on the world around you and how you make your mark on the world around you. It's all about prominence with this part of your chart. Venus in your 10th house is bringing favor, popularity, love, and affection to you. And this is more than likely going to be an opportunity for a lot of you Taurus people to start to maybe enhance the quality of life, both on and off the job, 
because you're noticing that a lot of your work is starting to pay off more for doing less work. Now, sometimes this can happen because we are drawing in better business, we're drawing in better assignments, we're drawing in better projects, things that are much more lucrative, but more low maintenance. We're also noticing our stock is rising with the people that we need to maintain that kind of reputation or awareness with. Venus is also going to be here helping you to make some adjustments to how you go about making a name for yourself in your field as well as off the job because you're also getting a chance to become a stronger influence in that environment or you're able to now rise to a space or a position where you command a stronger influence. Venus here is also going to be drawing in opportunities for you to start playing around with maybe making some kind of segue to a wealthier road that you could actually just move on into or shift lanes into this month and even into November. Mars is bringing that force of action, passion, energy, and obstacle clearing to your 10th house. And so this is going to be a month where a lot of you are also going to be breaking a lot of glass ceilings when it comes to not only your income, but also to maybe just how you are viewed in your professional community, in your work life. Mars in the 10th house is also going to be bringing in a lot of extra wealth to be made through labor. While we can lean on the Venus side, make more money for less work, Mars always does bring in that overtime opportunity for those of you who are looking to really make a big score or maybe just get way ahead of the rest of the year. This is really going to be supporting you. And we're also seeing you get a chance to work in a much more competitive environment with much more competitive allies, more competitive collaborators, people that are much more highly capable and live and maintain higher standards when it comes to your field. And the good news is about Mars is it's true blue standards. It's not aesthetic, right? It's not a look. It's not an image, right? Because image and looks and aesthetics are not proof of concept true blue people where it goes to the core. This is what this month is all about. How do we get you around people that are going to help lift you up as they go up and need you to help lift them up as well? And so a very, very strong, very enterprising month for the Taurus people. <clears throat> we also have Mercury moving into Pisces on the 9th. And so we're talking again about that 11th house of friendships and social networking and, you know, adventures and all of that good stuff. And Mercury, the planet of communications, haste and speed is going to be here from the 9th through the 28th of the month. So pretty much governing all of March. And with Mercury in the 11th house, we are opening up new lines of communication with our closest people. And you're going to be finding that this is going to be changing a lot of the dialogues that you're having with your friends, not only to become a lot more close, but we are having a new way to meet at the mind level and at the spirit level with all of our friends, with our entire community. There's a stronger sense of village going on around you. And even when it comes to love, Love and romance. Mercury here is speeding up developments in any kind of situation where you and a partner are looking to maybe actually realize some kind of joint goal or joint aspiration for the relationship or for the marriage or for the family. And for those of you that are single and available, you're definitely going to be finding that a lot of options are going to be available here for you because with Mercury in the 11th house, you're going to be having a lot more social contact opportunities happening here. People are going to be coming to you in droves and you're going to be connecting with people again on more of that mind spirit level first. And so we're getting to see this person for the inside very, very quickly as opposed to maybe just the outside. And so new love opportunities could be starting in reverse, which is a very interesting uh, prospect for a lot of you there. This is also going to be a time with Mercury in the 11th house where you may be noticing that friends and your support system are also speeding up the maturation of a lot of projects and a lot of investments that you have been working on all by yourself. And so it may feel like you're getting rushed a little bit, but maybe you're not going as fast as you could, and you will have the help and resources to hurry things along. 
We also have the sun in this part of your chart through the 20th of the month and bringing that attention, enhancement and support here. We've got stronger glue creating stronger bonds in your relationships. With the sun in the 11th house, this is of course talking about all relationships, whatever kind of relationships they are, platonic, the guys, the girls, or maybe family situations, maybe even going on with your uh, partners or partner-to-be's. But with the sun in Pisces, what's happening is that we are setting up an opportunity to bring in a lot more levity, a lot more joy, a lot more of that sweet, wholesome simplicity, which is going to allow everyone to be not only a lot more comfortable in their skin, but to feel more at home in the world with one another as well. So a very, very beautiful month. Uh, this is going to, of course, that attention, enhancement, and support in the 11th house as well, give a lot of you a chance to get to know everybody around you so much more intimately. After the 20th, the sun moves on into Aries. For the remainder of March and into the third week of April. And after the 28th, Mercury moves on into Aries for mostly the last three days of March, but again going into April as well. And so Aries is your 12th house, the area of your past, privacy, the hidden zone, anything to do with old business, old connections, or, you know, kind of an old life, old stories, or anything going on behind the scenes. Now, with the sun in the 12th house and Mercury in the 12th house, this is an opportunity to get back on track with something that we had been detached from, that maybe we lost a connection with, lost our way with, and bring it into the present. A lot of you Taurus people are going to get a chance to recover or revive something in your life that maybe we never were meant to lose. And this goes back a while. This could go back months. I feel like for a lot of you, this could be going back years. We are going through a period right this year where a lot of old crossroads, a lot of old cycles, pre-2014 for the most part, are getting activated. And there are things that we get to come back into alignment with. With Mercury in the 12th house, we're opening up old lines of communication, reuniting with old friends, reuniting with old allies. And with the sun in the 10th, uh, sorry, the 12th house, we're also getting a chance to maybe breathe life back into projects or back into initiatives or talents that had once been maybe stale or left up on a shelf or pushed aside or displaced or deferred for whatever reason. Ultimately, it's bringing you back to you and bringing things back to you. Finally, we have a full moon to talk about here, which falls on the 18th of the month. And this is a full moon in Virgo, in your fifth house of romance, creativity, recreation, as well as parenthood. Now, with a full moon in Virgo in your fifth house on the 18th, it's opening up a window period, right? They always do, the lunations, two weeks at a time. So basically from the 18th of March through the end of the month. A full moon in your fifth house is going to be raising the energy to a point where a culmination or a transition has to occur. A lot of you may be finding that a lot of relationships, whether it's a relationship with a romantic partner or one of your kids, or maybe somebody that you are maybe in a creative group with, or, you know, or a business partnership with, or even um, something that you've got going on with another establishment, is going to be turning a page. A full moon in the fifth house can end a road we have been on with a partner or with one of our kids in order for us to be set on a better road. However, a full moon can be a bit tense because how people handle that, how people respond to that, of course, is going to be dependent on what's going on with them and their level of, you know, maturity and, and how their level of comfort and all of that. And so sometimes these transitions can be a little bit tough on kids. They can be tough on adults too. But this full moon is is going to be a time where we are getting a chance to orient ourselves in the direction of something that is much more mutually enhancing, mutually fulfilling, and healthier and stronger and satisfying for everybody involved. This is also going to be a time where a lot of you are going to get a chance, if you are single or available, to maybe end a period of feeling single or maybe not having any prospects around because a full moon ends that chapter. And we may find that, again, that exploration, that fantasy fulfillment is also on the table. And that also applies for those of you who are currently coupled 
or married because again a, a cycle of maybe not having certain needs or uh, maybe desires getting explored is also going to come to an end so that is what i have for you taurus people i hope you enjoyed it if you did don't forget to like share and subscribe you know i appreciate it and should you ever want to get a session with me go on ahead to my website it's integrativemysticism.com